All right, everybody, I'm going to show you how I set up my Duet Wi-Fi on my FT5R2 24-volt system. Um, the mods on my system are a uh, E3D Titan Arrow extruder and a generic Amazon FET board to run the stock heated bed. Um, other than that, the obvious major mod is the Duet Wi-Fi. So, um, so as far as Marlin goes, the only difference from, between stock and my system is the, um, uh, the settings related to the extruder and the thermistor on the uh, hot end. So running down these, I'm not going to go into network at all. The drives, um, this is defining drive um, 0, 1, 2, and 3. They are the X, Y, Z, and extruder axes. Um, the... Uh, when I, when I plugged it in with default settings, um, the X and the Z axes went backwards. So I had to go in and flip this one to a zero and that reversed the direction. This should actually say goes backward, goes backward. Um, I just didn't change the commenting when I uh, changed the value. So uh, when I plugged it in, I took the connector from the uh, MKS board, I unplugged it and um, the two little key features that go into notches on the connector, I pointed those toward the locking tab on the connector on the duet board. And I know those connectors aren't made for the duet board, but it fits and I'm kind of a get her done type. So if it goes and it's not gonna break, I'm probably not gonna put those Molex connectors on there and spend an hour playing with crimpers. So. Anyway, uh, putting them all on with the keys toward the locking tabs, this is, these are the settings that result in stuff going in the right direction. Um, I use these settings for micro-stepping. It was just the 16 uh, step with interpolation. Um, maybe I'll play with that later. Uh, steps per millimeter, 80, 80, 400 are the drive settings. Extruders 410 for the uh, Titan Arrow. If you have the stock one, it's like 105 or somewhere in there, but you, it's whatever the tuned value is you had in uh, Marlin. So uh, the speeds, do what you want to do on these. Uh, these are all multiplied by 60, these two lines here, so they, look, they don't look like numbers you're used to seeing. I think what I did is I put 8 for the, um, yeah, that's right, 8 for X and Y for the instantaneous speed changes. Um, and then I put... Um, the uh, accelerations as 1200. The maximum speeds, I think this was 300 and 150 and 15 and something like that. I don't know what they are, but they're whatever that is divided by 60. I'm not going to do the math on that here. Um, motor currents I set to 1200 milliamps, and uh, and then there's an idle timeout of 30 seconds. It'll um, shut off the motors when they're idle. Uh, access limits, um, if you follow the wizard, you can just use these settings and they'll work, or you follow the wizard and do what it makes sense. The end stops, I had to like flip, I had to flip Z to a one instead of a zero because it was, it was inverted at first and I don't know why that was, but this is what works. Z probe, I didn't set any of those settings. I don't use a Z probe. I use a piece of paper and a nozzle. Um, the heaters. Um, so this is the thermistor setting for the stock uh, bed thermistor. I have the bed designated as heater zero and a maximum temp of 120. And uh, so this this beta value of 4066 is what I found online and there was no corresponding C value. So I'm putting that as zero. Uh, I, th I believe on the stock hot end, you would use the same thermistor setting for the other heater. Um, this is the E3D um, Titan Arrow setup, so it uses these values. I found that somewhere online. It seems to work. So 280 is my max temp there. Um, fans, uh, I found online that if you use uh, fan zero for your park cooler, then the slicers uh, generally recognize that. So if you make your, you can make your life easier by just plugging your park cooler into fan zero. Um, what this says is M10. This is like the initial parameter that turns the fan on upon boot up, and what it's doing is M106 says turn on a fan, fan number zero. Don't invert the output. Have the speed be zero, but when you're running it, use a 500 hertz uh, pulse width modulation frequency. Um, so it's initially off, and that's how you want a park cooler. Um, 
the uh, second fan is a hot end fan, which I'm pulse width modulating. So it's designated as fan one, uh, 500 hertz PWM. And related to heater one, which is my hot end, um, and when it reaches T, a temperature of 50 C, turn it on. I don't know what the L1.0 is. I didn't look that up. It was just in the example I'm using. So I kept it. I don't know if it's doing anything or not. Um, and then uh, the third fan, fan two, uh, is the chassis fan. And this is also set to be turned on with G-code um, and pulse width modulated. So you can set it with, you, you can put a value on S to turn it up or down. Um, tools, they are what they are. They were chosen based on how I picked the options in, during the wizard, um, and it works. So uh, the what I had to do in order to make the chassis fan turn off when I'm not printing anything is I have an M106 P2S1 in my startup script in Kira, and I have an M106 P2S0 in the in the ending script so that it turns on the fan and then turns it off beginning and end of print job so I don't sit there and wear out that fan and make a bunch of noise. Um, so it's operated just like the, uh, the park cooler fan, but the park cooler is actually called within the G-code. So that's it. Um, I'll throw this on Dropbox and post a link, um, but you can, worst case, read it right off of here if you want. All right.